Marina Zenovich won two Emmys uh, back in 2009 for her film Roman Polanski, Wanted and Desired. And now she's back in the hunt with HBO's Robin Williams, Come Inside My Mind. I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby to ask her, what was the most surprising thing you learned about Robin Williams while making this? Um, probably, not that I wouldn't have known this beforehand, but how intelligent he was and how kind of knowledgeable he was, how well read he was, how much he knew about history. I've said this before, it's kind of like, you can't make jokes about history unless you really understand history. And I guess that to me was just something that I didn't really, I didn't really think about. And it was great to kind of realize that he was, you know, well-educated and, and knew a lot about the world. And was there any particular uh, um, part of Williams's career that affected you in an emotional way that uh, led to you making this documentary? Um, well, I was very upset when he when he passed. I mean, so a, a few years had passed, and we decided to make it. But I mean, it was it was a it's funny and kind of mentally preparing for this interview, I was um, thinking about what a great experience it was making the film, but also how difficult it was. Um, the great part was, you know, spending time with Robin in the editing room. I mean, it was fun. I mean, I still, every, every screening that I've ever been to, I love to sit through it and just watch it and I still laugh and I'm not faking it. I mean, it's just, he's, he's amazing. But what was hard was dealing with the emotional stuff, which is kind of why we make these films, to try to get into someone's, you know, psyche. And um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just wondering if, uh, was there uh, a, 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 a part of his career that had a, that affected you, that made you want to um, make this documentary? I'm, I'm guessing after his passing. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole thing, you know, I mean, he was just a, a, a one of a kind comedian that everyone loved. And I was honored that I was I was able to make it. I mean, you know, it's 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 the not the year. It's the it's the the documentaries are just kind of everywhere. It used to be something that you didn't really brag about. Now it's like, oh my God, you're a documentary filmmaker. That's so exciting. What have you done? And, you know, just the mere fact that I got to make a Robin Williams film was just really special and hard and emotional, but touching. And um, I think I think we're all pretty pleased with it. Um, the editors and I, the editors and I like to say that, you know, four hearts made this film. It was Robin's heart and my heart and my editor's hearts. And we all just kind of, we, we, we cared so much about representing him in the right way on the screen. And I, I think it shows. And I think probably the thing that sticks out the most about this documentary is the fact that you uh, had his oldest son, Zach, participating in it. Uh, did it take any convincing to try to, to, to get Zach to participate in the film? Or was he uh, very willing to do so? I mean, these are always hard asks. And um, I was thrilled that he was willing to sit down. I had no idea what I was in for. I mean, Zach is so well-spoken and thoughtful. And I mean... I just started crying in the interview thinking, God, how, how proud his dad would be of him for what a, a fine young man he turned out to be. Um, the interview is really, really emotional. And I think he was willing to go there. I mean, it took some work, but not, not in the interview, but to get to the chair, it took work. But once he was there, he was committed and he was ready to go. And I think it really shows in the film. Um, I, I wanted to get the other children as well, but I mean, this was a, a difficult subject in the sense that it was too soon for some people, which I completely understand. So I tried to be as respectful as possible, and I felt that Zach really spoke for the family. Uh, do you know if any of the other members of the family have seen the film or have reacted to it? You know, I never heard if they saw it. I don't know if they did. 
I um, I had heard that Zach saw it and was pleased with it. So that um, meant a lot. Um, I know that his first wife, Valerie Velarde, who's in the movie, had seen it, but I don't know about um, his second or third wives. So uh, one of the other uh, other films that you've done in your filmography was a documentary about another comedian uh, who also experienced issues with addiction, uh, Richard Pryor. Were there any similarities that you saw between the two that caught you by surprise? Mm, that caught me by surprise. I mean, I think what I loved about them both was how honest they are or were. Um, but continue to live on in their comedy. I mean, Richard was just, oh my God, just out of this world, honest, talking about what he had survived in his life. Um, and, and Robin got more honest as he grew older and kind of came to terms with what his life was. Um, which, which we were really hungry for once he got there. You know, it's like we were really looking for um, thoughtful, introspective um, lines to kind of in his voice to put throughout to kind of give you that feeling like you were in there with him. Um, but they're, you know, they're two great American icons. Um, and uh, I, I love them both. And I'm, I'm curious, what was it like to go through um, all the old footage of, of Robin? Because I'm it, it, the, the getting to, you know, going through not just his stand up specials, but also, you know, going through um, the uh, outtakes of Mork and Mindy. Oh, that was and, the best. Uh, I mean, I, I, what was that like to sift through all of that? Well, I mean, I was thrilled when Pam, da Pam Dauber agreed to talk. And then when she said, you know, I have a blooper reel. I think it's in my garage. I, I don't live too far from here. We were like, oh my God, we'll come with you right now. I mean, when we got our hands on that and then Scott Marshall offered it as well. I mean, that stuff is gold. It is gold. You know, that's like what you dream of when you're a documentary filmmaker. Um, just seeing what he did in performances, you know, I mean, I think the hardest thing with so much archive is really picking, picking and choosing, right? Picking what goes with what, what not to use. And it, it just kind of comes together with choices. You kind of, it's, um, I feel like with archive, it's like they're a bunch of found objects and you kind of rub them together and see what works together. And, and it, it's just, with editing so much archive, you just need time to to see what works, and it was it was magical. I mean, it was, you know, I, he did tell a lot of the same jokes, so we heard different versions, and it's like picking the best version. And you know, it's 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 a great process when you have time. And my my two editors, Greg Finton and Poppy Das, did an amazing job. And Jake Wittersheen, our, our assistant editor, who, you know, everything was on a spreadsheet. Um, I'm kind of like old fashioned where it's like I write stuff down and I'm looking at not videotapes, but like clips on my computer where he's going through, you know, you get where you're looking for like needles in haystacks of lines or jokes or looks. It's just it's a it's a scavenger hunt, a treasure hunt um, and a lot of fun. And uh, I'm, I'm I'm curious was uh, after you come out of you know Robin was such you know a present figure uh, for anyone who paid any attention like to anything pop culture related uh, while he was alive uh, after making this movie did you come out uh, uh, on the other end viewing mm. Williams any differently or uh, 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 with like a newfound uh, like respect or epiphany afterwards. Oh, totally. I mean, but I think when you're in an editing room for like nine, I don't know, nine months, a long time, and someone is so alive, what I really kind of had to deal with was his death, because I felt that he was alive. So it wasn't until it was over that I started to get sad. So it was almost like his, his energy and his humor and his, his just, just his 
just zest for life and observation and just joking. And I mean, it's just, it's so infectious that it, he felt alive. So, you know, I, I'm remembering now as I'm telling this that I, at the last couple screenings that I went to, I was just like, wow, I feel really sad. And why is that? It's because, you know, we're not, we're not with that material. So what's the epiphany? I mean, it's a, a, a glorious comic genius who, who we were lucky enough to be able to um, appreciate and, and experience and god damn it don't we wish that he were alive right now what kind of riffs would he be doing on this mess we're in you know oh, we, no. felt, we felt that a lot and i i feel that more and more as months go by and um you know it was you know you see a lot of people in it and especially towards the end of the movie a lot of them have have trouble you know getting to those areas um uh, uh uh, I'm blanking on the name of his co-star from Mork and Mindy right now. Um, oh, Pam Dauber. Yeah, Pam uh, couldn't even talk about it. Um, was was there anyone else who who had a, a really just difficult time uh, getting to that moment, or just wasn't able to? Um, I think everyone I interviewed. I mean, it was the elephant in the room, right? So I almost didn't even have to bring anything up. It, it was like almost like it was going to be discussed at some point. It was just a matter of how, when, and to what degree. So like for Billy Crystal, I felt that his emotion through the whole thing carried that weight because he meant so much to him and they were such good friends and he thought they were going to grow old together. Um, I think every single person reacted as if you or I would think they would react, right? I mean, it, it's kind of like David Letterman was sad. Um, I think he was, God, I can't remember. He was with like some comedians when he heard and, you know. I think like he was that, taping his show. Oh, was he? I believe he, I, I believe he might've been. Um, but it's just, it you could, know. Yeah, it broke at like six o'clock or seven o'clock Eastern time ah, when he's usually okay. taping his show. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're really looking for, I mean, we had, for example, someone we took out, uh, we had his makeup artist who was a very good friend of his. And, you know, it's like you, it's all gradations of how much do you, you want to evoke emotion, but you don't want overkill. And like some people really started crying because it was really upsetting. Some people just reacted, you know, it's hard for some people to get emotional, even if in difficult situations. I mean, that's how I spend my life kind of trying to get people to break down, not in tears, but just to show emotion. And, um, you know, so we got kind of what we got, but I think we were able to get enough of a, of a, of a mix to show what it felt like to all these people. I mean, it's, it's, it's very sad, you know? And I think one of the things about his death that his, I think just made it so much more pronounced and, and I, I, I'm not sure the word for it, but um, you know, when, when he died, there was, you know, all the talk, he had been so upfront about his addiction and uh, battles with depression, but then we find out that he had been uh, uh, diagnosed with Parkinson's and post-mortem. Now we also know that he had uh, at least the symptoms of Lewy body dementia um, was there a reason why you didn't go too much into uh, the specifics about Louis body dementia in, in the movie and how that might have affected him? Well, we, we did touch on it. Mm -hmm. I felt that, I felt that that was enough. Um, I felt that if I wasn't going to have the people around him who were the right ones to speak about it, then it wasn't necessary to have anyone. I mean, Bobcat was someone who I tried to interview, tried to get to sit down with me and, and it was too hard for him. So I told him that I would use archive of him and that's how I ended up you know, talking about that. But it's, I mean, this is really delicate stuff that you, you know, I'm almost, I feel like I wanna go like this. It's, it's so delicate that you, you really are kind of 
less is more. Let, let's, let's stay classy. You know, there's always this thing called Google, which people go and search and find out and, you know, um, and we really wanted to celebrate Robin. So, so we touched on it and it was a big part of his end, but you know, I wasn't getting anyone who was there with him at that time. So we didn't go there. You know, making documentaries, sorry to cut you off, but it's, okay. it's, it's so funny because it's kind of like, you're really working with what you have. And it, it, it's just something that people should think of when they're watching a documentary. Like sometimes the things that you might want, I may have wanted too, but I didn't get them, you know? So it's kind of like, you're really, it's, it's a weird, job where you're working within kind of certain rules, what you have, what you can create, you know, while trying to stay um, above board and not cheesy, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but- I sound I, like a mom, don't I? I'm not, I'm not, I'm just like, it's just, you know, it's hard, it's hard. And you have like friggin' limits that, to what you can do based on what you get. So that's why you're always pushing to get more, more, more. And it's, it's you know, it takes its toll. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I do want to close this on a bit of a more lighthearted note. Okay. Uh, I mentioned, I'll go there. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned uh, that you uh, won two Emmys uh, for your film, uh, Roman Polanski, Wanted and Desired. That was a great moment. Yeah. Can I what was the, uh, tell us what was your experience like when you won when you won those Emmys? Oh my God, I've never won anything, people. Okay, I won like a Snickers bar for best forehand at like tennis camp when I was like twelve, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, I did. It was a big deal. There was no candy allowed, so it was like a really big deal. Um, and I have a pretty good forehand, um, but it was a real honor. And I can still, my body still remembers the action that I did as I got up because I, I remember f how I walked and I went and instead of like, you know, kissing my husband, I hugged the editor because my editor, Joe Binney, my husband also worked on it. He was a writer. The three of us were writers and we won the, the best writing um, after I won best director. But I went to hug Joe because we made the film together and it was such a, a collaboration and such a labor of love it took five years i got pregnant in the middle of it not with joe with my husband and um it was just a beautiful moment and i was i was thrilled and then when i was backstage we won for best writing and so i i came on stage and um and yeah i mean it's 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 great fun when you win i mean every you win if you get nominated basically but it's really fun to win and you hope that you look good and you hope you don't trip and you hope you have the right brawn i mean it's all you know <laughs> but altogether a positive experience that, a very positive experience and you're walking around with your emmys and you know and they were right over there for a while but they're in my office so professional <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, Marina, so much. Uh, to all of your viewers, go to goldderby.com right now and make your predictions so you can compete against our experts, editors, and other fans and prove if you are the smartest prognosticator in Hollywood. But before you go, click our subscribe button on this video so you're alerted to our great chats with top contenders. Thanks so much, Marina. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Take care.